There's a saying, there's never enough time to do it right, but there's always enough time to do it again. The, you know, the expression, do it right the first time, that is actually very inefficient in software development. And I think a lot of people don't realize that. They, they think, and with the very best intentions, they want to do it right the first time. But very often in agile software development, we don't have enough information initially because we build software incrementally. So the initial design that we come up with is almost guaranteed to be wrong. We got to live with that. We got to understand that. So that's why, you know, people like Ken Peck say, do the simplest thing that could possibly work because we're going to have to change it anyway, because we're not seeing the big picture initially. And knowing how to go from one design to another design is absolutely critical. And it's a technique that a lot of people don't know how to do. I highly recommend Martin Fowler's book on refactoring because when you know how to refactor, then it doesn't matter what design you pick initially because you know how to go from one design to another design. And that is incredibly freeing. And, and I mean, do it in a safe way. When I say the big R word, refactoring, for a lot of people, that's a scary word because we all have that experience of, you know, going into a legacy code and making a simple little fix and seeing 50 bugs sprout up. For me, good software is software that is extensible, that is less risky to build and is maintainable. Those are the keys for me. How do you get maintainability in software? By first of all, understanding the problem domain and finding the right solution. Rather than hacking in and just procedurally creating a solution, understand the domain and create a domain model that represents what we're building. Then it'll be understandable, not just to you and your future self, but other people as well. It takes a little extra time and effort, but it really pays back many fold in terms of maintenance because we're constantly going back into code. And so we want to be able to be effective with it. I think the thing is that we can't really tell the future, but the big issue is we don't want to sweat that, right? A lot of us, <laughs> we feel like we're supposed to be able to predict the future, but psychic abilities is not in any job description that I've seen for a developer. So when managers and customers ask, will this ever change or do, you know, we don't know, <laughs> things change, things do change. So what we need to do is find techniques that help us accommodate change when it happens. And there are many ways to do that. You know, first of all, writing clean code, having a good domain model, following some of the principles like the single responsibility principle or the open close principle. These things are well known. It's just that they're not well covered in a lot of curriculum for computer science, but they're out there. And that's what I want to focus on with you guys in this channel. I want to focus on the key aspects that make software maintainable and extendable because that's the things that drop the cost and the risk of software. Those are the things that humans need to know even in the age of AI. I think the key skills for a great developer is one who has the right habits. And that's really critical because I think we all know the right things to do, but during crunch time when we are under pressure, we fall back on our habits. So the thing that I notice about senior developers, the, the people I most admire in development, they always think in terms of code quality. They always think in terms of building software that's extensible. And so when crunch time happens and, and they gotta get something out the door, they don't fall back on old practices. They use the practices that they understand the best and that they're most effective with. You know, it's, it's a, I think a total illusion, the quick and dirty illusion. You know, oh, we'll just get it out the door and it'll be quick. No, that, that doesn't really solve much problems. And what's most important? Because we want to deliver early so that our users can get some value as soon as possible. So I, I would point to Martin Fowler's book, Refactoring, Michael Feather's book, Working Effectively with Legacy Code, my book, Beyond Legacy Code. There's a few others as well. There's not a lot on the, in the field, but I think those books really kind of nail a lot of, gets, gets us started in that field. And then it's an exploration, you know, an exploration of understanding what works and what doesn't work. We are in the stone ages, going from the stone ages to the golden ages of software development. We're figuring it all out. So we're one of the few professions that haven't figured it out yet because we're new. And so we're, we're suffering through these challenges, but it's also the fun time because we get to, we get to be the pioneers. We should definitely have schedules but we should be flexible. There's something called the iron triangle in management where there are three things, that's why they call it a triangle, that you can possibly flex, which could be scope of what we're building. It could be the number of people working on the project 
or it could be the amount of time we have for the project. Those are the three things that we can flex on and we can only flex two of them. If we try to flex all three at the same time, what we lose is actually the fourth and key factor, which is the quality of our own work. And we never want to be flexible on that. We always want to build stuff that is high quality. The value of software development is the discovery process. The whole purpose of writing code in the way we do it in Agile is not just to make a computer program, but to make the program have the right processes. So this is ideal for discovering what the right thing is. So to assume that you can just sit down and out of your head, write a specification that fully articulates what needs to be built and then spend a year building it, not at all changing your mind or, or revising anything, that's not Agile. So what is Agile? And how can AI assist Agile software development? To find out, watch this next video.